Right. Okay. Yep. I think we're live now. Yeah, we're live. Hi, guys. Uh, it's Nick with another chat, and I've got Tom with me. How are you doing, buddy? Hi. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Are you good? I'm. I'm all good this end. Yeah. So your your back issues are solved, are they? Because you put your back yeah. out, didn't you? Yeah, put my back out, and I was out out for two weeks, pretty much, which is the longest I've been out with it. I mean, I did it in years ago, and uh, it's sort of a reoccurring thing, but I was lifting like a 26 kilogram box, FBA box, and just didn't lift it right, didn't lift it with my knees, and sort of bent over, and uh, yeah, that's it. You know, I was, um, yeah, I was in a bad shape for a while, and it, it did concern me, but I'm, yeah, I'm better now, so. Yeah, cool. I'll be doing the I'll be doing the trolley dash over the weekend if the weather holds. So, yeah, I was looking at weather. I think down here it's going to be a washout. Mm. I don't think I'm even going to bother going out. Yeah. I, mean, uh, there's today, an yeah. I was going to say today was gorgeous. Today felt like summer. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah. I th I think tomorrow there may be some people that will risk it because it's been such nice weather today. But I think mostly it'll just be a washout. Yeah, I think so. I can't wait. I'm just itching for decent weather now. I've got real withdrawal symptoms. I haven't been to a decent boot sale for what feels like forever. I don't know when the last one was, really. Mm. Yeah, I went I to one the other week, and it was, uh, it, you know, it still wasn't quite going properly. But, yeah, it was it was quite nice to be back at one, to be honest. You know, I was missing my bacon butties and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I always find around this time of year, a little thing creeps in my head, like, is it going to be like it was last year? Is the stuff going to be out there? You know what I mean? I, and then when you get back into it, you realise there's just tons of crap out there. But yeah, because it's been so long since I've had a decent sized haul, the doubts creep in that I'm going to be able to pick it up again. So yeah, I just I just need to get out there to a decent boot sale and, and find a car full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's um, yeah. It's it's all too tempting. I mean, yeah. The other week I went and I got enough. I got enough stuff. Then I mean, uh, I made I made the mistake of getting like boot sale fever. That I was so excited that it was a boot sale and I hadn't been to one and whatnot. I just bought tons of stuff, which is just either going to go in the bin or get redonated. I just didn't look at. I, I I did the ultimate computer game sin and uh, bought some FIFA games no. because I thought they were new and sealed but they weren't they'd been resealed and i didn't spot that because i thought well you know it's not <clears throat> mega money i got about 40 um copies of fifa 11 on the uh, xbox 360 fifa 11 and there's some playstation 2 fifa games and a few other sing star in portuguese or something like that it was a tenor <laughs> And I was like, well, even you and Sealed, you know, nah, just, you know, there's a bit of profit there on FBA. I know they're not great sellers. I get back and they've got like game station labels on the inside saying like pre-owned and then it's been sealed over the top. I think they were going to go to Poundland or something maybe. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I know, I know. You, you Magpie, Magpie resealed. Re oh, I've got an oh, echo. I've got an echo. Oh. Where's that coming from? Am I still echoing? No. no yeah, not. I'm pretty sure Magpie do that because not only do they sell to Poundland, I was in a um, bargain home stores place, whatever they call it, and they had the same rack with the replay stuff. So I think Magpie sell to various outlets. The, and they sell to British Heart. They're selling to British Heart Foundation as well because a couple. Um, I went in Welling Garden City and they got replay stuff in there uh, down near you. So, oh, really? What an actual rack full of it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Blimey. so go be careful because also with those replay ones, the stickers were on the outside, so you know, you could be caught out if the sticker had been peeled off the replay sticker. Yeah. Anyway, so I've got a pile of these sodding FIFA games that are worth diddly squat. So um, I think I'll just chuck the CDs and use them for cases, probably. So 
The Sing the Sing Star yeah. games were official PlayStation Two sealed, but their high school and musicals uh, Sing Star in Portuguese. So <laughs> and I got like ten of them. Have you tried scanning them into Music Magpie? See weird no. effect. No, I haven't. The problem is when you scan it into FBA, it just comes up with the English version. So ooh, it could be iffy, but yeah, I might try Magpie see if see if they'll go there. So yeah, it'll probably come up at 10p or something ridiculous. Yeah, but then I was annoyed with myself because I filled my trolley full of these sodden FIFA games, and then of course I was scrambling around carrying other stuff. So it was a bit of a poor move on my part. Right. Yeah. Um, it happens. We all do it. We all. <laughs> I've got a catalogue of errors, but yeah, as long as we learn from it and move on, that's all. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it, it, it's definitely. I'm itching to get around them boot sales. Really, um, just because I think I've done the charity shops a bit too much around near me. I feel like I've gone to them a bit too much. But saying that, I was I was in them today, and. Um, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I was in there and they got a barber jacket, like a wax barber. I posted it on Facebook, I think. And uh, it was going to go in the rag because it, it hadn't got its detachable hood. And I was like, oh, I'll give you a fiver for it. Anyway, I went in today and the bloke who donated it came in the shop with the hood. No way. And the woman looked at me with this look of like annoyance. And then she was like, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, because what else are they going to do with it? You know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, got a complete nice jacket for a fiver. So that should be a good fifty, sixty quid. Wow. Is that a like yeah. proper vintage sort of eighties one or something? Yeah. It's, it's like a, nice. I, I actually yeah. had one of them back in the eighties. I used to wear it a lot, and I don't know where it went, but yeah, they're sought after now. Yeah, and um, also someone came in with a. Two play, two fat PlayStation twos, but they they wouldn't sell me them because they got a pat test them, which is annoying. But hey oh but they came in with um, uh, a Game Boy Advance, yeah, one of the old ones in a in a carry case. It comes with a, a car charger, which is a bit annoying. And then I haven't I literally haven't seen one of these in a long time. It's the original DS, you know, the oh, really comfy one. looking one. Yeah. Nice. So, don't know if the, I mean the, the the Game Boy Advance works. I tested that there, but I don't know if this one works. But yeah, I haven't seen one of these in a long, long time. I, I, I see the DS lights all the time, but I never see one of these. Um, did, did it come yeah. in the charger? Uh, um, yeah, sorry, this is the one with the car charger. Sorry, not the other one. And it came with sort of some mediocre games like Thunderbirds and Yo. Yo Geo, Yo Geo, whatever it is, and oh, then yeah, a knockoff yeah. copy of Simpsons Road Rage. So, not great, but it was a they were five or each, and I couldn't really leave them there to be honest. Not mega money in them, but you know. Have you tried the, um, the Game Boys on? Game Boys. No, not really to be honest. Uh, I tend to just keep them <laughs> at the moment. Um, it's just putting um, them in the box somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just for the moment. I'm just kind of. It's a bit like PlayStation ones. I know some people are chucking them up uh, on FBA, but uh, I've I have sent in. Uh, I sent in a Mega Drive, and I've sent I sent in a PlayStation, the original PlayStation one, uh, and I sent it in with like um, a remote, a memory card, and the hookup cable that goes to like an aerial. You know, the old style one. Yeah. Uh, co not coaxial, but the aerial input. Anyway, I sold that and it got returned because the woman kicked off saying, "Oh, this has got a cable which doesn't fit any telly that was made in the last ten years." Which, you know, obviously some tellies don't have that. But you're buying an old games console. What do you expect, kind of thing? Uh, buying a twenty-year-old console and moaning it won't work on a. Yeah. She's letting the negative feedback, saying she couldn't believe it didn't come with a SCART connection. I was like, really? So, and then the Mega Drive got a return because the person couldn't work out how to ch uh, tune it in, but then it got put in defective, so then I had to pay to get it sent back to me. So I was like, sod this. Yeah, I haven't 
sent much tech up, if any, to be honest, apart from controllers yeah. and, and a few leads and bits. Yeah, I, I haven't, think, I haven't yeah. sent consoles up. I think from speaking to others that have done it, it's kind of a bit scammy as well. Some people, you know, they, they buy one, then send their broker one back. So I've started marking stuff with one of these UV pens and like logging serial numbers and stuff like that. Um, I've done all right sending in things like um, uh, like Xbox, not really nice condition Xbox controllers and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I sent some uh, GameCube ones up, and I was getting really good. I think I was, I think I got twenty quid for one. Yeah, yeah, because they they work with a Wii though, so that's yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I saw. Did, was it you that had some wave birds the other week? Oh uh, no, it was Hixie sent me a Wavebird. Uh, I bought it off, uh, but it's here actually. Because uh, they used to go for silly money. I don't know what it's like it. now. This one's being entombed in my own collection, unfortunately. But um, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I love those. When I was big into the GameCube back in whenever it was, 2000, 2001, I loved the Wavebird. You could just sit yeah. right back on your sofa. Oh, I loved it, playing Mario yeah. Kart. Because the original, uh, not to make this computer games hang out, but the original like ones, the cables didn't quite seem long enough. So I remember yeah. my mate having one of these, and I was dead jealous. So, yeah, um, yeah I bought that off Hixie, um, and he, he did us a good deal on it. But that's, I don't know what they're going for, to be honest. I haven't even looked what they're going for, but I'm sure no, they're going I, for I never see them. I haven't seen one of those. I don't know. Probably the last one I had would have been when we had the gaming outlet. And yeah, I bought this the other day as well. I bought a an old Master System too. Sweet. Um, yeah. So that was with that was from uh, cash converters. I paid up for it though. Paid thirty quid for it. Um, wow. Is there any margin left after that? Well, I bought it because it was for myself, but it came with it came with some all right games as well. It came with two pads uh, and some, you know, fairly all right games. So I'm probably uh, and, and they're in the cases as well. So I'm going to send them into FBA probably because uh, mm. I've got most of them, and then I'll keep that for myself because it's in quite a nice condition. So thirty quid is standing tall on it, but yeah. And so. Uh, does that have um, Alex Kidd or Sonic? Yeah, Sonic that's Sonic, that one is. Um, uh, so, yeah, I thought I'd give it a go. I bought an N64 from them as well, but um, neither of the controllers work. Well, one works, but it's like flaccid little thumbstick thing <laughs> rattles around, and the other one just doesn't recognise at all, so I've got to take that back. But that's the danger of buying them from, you know, pawn shops. Uh, yeah. And that... And that came with the expansion pack and uh, GoldenEye, and it was 25 quid. So, pretty, yeah, that, yeah, I did so, well on that, that charity shop one I had, because um, I've managed to get 20-something 20, 20 on FBA for the expansion. I sent that in, just as a loose one, bagged. Yeah. And I yeah. sent one of the controllers in, and I think I got 20 quid for that, or maybe more. And I've still got a console and controller, and I've sent the games in as well and sold a couple of the games. I think Perfect Dark went for 10 or 12 just as a cart. So, yeah, yeah I've done well out of that one. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really de delved into that because I was initially sort of burnt by getting that PlayStation sent back. But I suppose you could send stuff up and, you know, like send a PlayStation 2 cable in with it as well that will connect to a SCART or whatever. I mean, I've sent in loose stuff. I've sent in, like, loose... DS games and stuff like that, and like Game Boy Advance stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, I've done a fair bit of that, and in even um, old black and white Game Boy games. If there's a listing on there, I've sent them up just loose as a cart to experiment, and they've all sold. Yeah. So it's I think it's just keeping what they're looking for, you know. Yeah, keeping that, keeping that sort of sending all sorts of different stuff because you never know what what's going to sell. Really, I mean, yeah, I've sent. I sent the odd Wii remote in and the odd cable in, that sort of thing. You get in job lots. Yeah. So yeah. Um, when when I messaged you earlier, you were saying you, you, you've been in a ranty mood. I've seen a few of your videos recently, <laughs> which have been there's fantastic. Been lately. Excuse my French, but yeah, there's been some right prats. 
I'm, I'm going to do a dickhead of the week, but I'll, I, mainly there was a guy, this was a car boot I went to the other week, and uh, there was a game gear, this woman had got a game gear, and this woman, to be honest, almost qualified for dickhead of the week, because she got, she was one of those people, she arrived late, and she got really good stuff, she got original 1970s, 80s Star Wars figures, she got a, a boxed Commodore 64 and a boxed, um, um oh god what is it um zx spectrum with yeah. about 100 games um she got a game gear she got ds's she got box uh star wars play sets wow. and like everyone was going nuts but her prices were crazy i mean like the zx spectrum was 85 quid and it came with about 50 games that did the other one had about 100 games and she wanted 110 for that and then the Star Wars figures were five each, were they, or four quid each? Some were seven quid each. And then ne some had accessories, but they, you know, they were knackered. And then, like, the DSs she wanted 25 quid for, DS lights with a charger. Uh, so it was, like, it was great stuff, but her prices were mental. Yeah. So. It's the sort of store you walk up to and just you're just praying inside they're not a dealer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you see them. And it's yeah. like, please. I, I don't, the thing is, I don't think she was a dealer. She just looked everything up. Um, right. And the game gear, it was a game gear with about 15 games, but she hadn't got any batteries. So I don't know if it worked. And the game gears, the screens on them just pack in dead easy. Yeah, so, so the, um, the mics, not the, no, the speakers, the speakers go on them. It's hard to find one with working speakers. Yeah, I mean, I've bought about two or three game gears from the car boot, and I've yet to get one that actually works fully. Mm. Whether it's just got a line that's funny, or so she wanted it eighty quid for this, and this bloke opposite came over, and I don't know whether he's seen my YouTube videos and he was intentionally trying to annoy me, or he was just being a dick that day, or whether he'd just taken some kind of drugs that morning, and he was like <laughs> a guy in his forties. And uh, he was trying to convince me, this other bloke who was there, and the dealer, that the original Sonic ge uh, game on the Game Gear was selling for 200 quid, unboxed, loose cart. And I was like, there's no way. And he just kept going, look it up, look it up. So I got my phone out and looked it up. I said, yeah, they're selling for 99p. He's like, exactly, 200 quid. I was like, no, 99p. Game on the system. So I think he was dicking with me, but he was aggressively sort of, like oh just look it up and then the woman wants to put a price up because she thinks it's real she's like oh i might i think i might want a hundred for for this lot maybe more actually she should <laughs> take it away and put it. i'm like really oh, so, you've got, yeah. oh you've got you're back oh you're back oh we're gone no i can see you now you've, you've vanished you've and i just had a little round of portrait picture uh, for a minute. That, that happens when i get too ranty it's like sort of you know censoring yeah, the, the internet censors you. <laughs> Somebody's watching. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, I, I I would I had to really and the other bloke wasn't having any of it either. But and then after the guy pissed off, I showed the woman and said, look, they're actually selling for ninety nine p plus postage. You you know you you're not missing out on mega money. Just just some people are just dickheads for no for no reason other than they like messing with people. I think. Yeah. Well, like, there's a guy who buys and sells um, vintage computer stuff, and he, he has a stall at the Hitchin Market and the Hitchin car boot sale. And he also does some of the other car boot sales, like the Saturday one that's fairly near me. And he's so annoying because he gets in early, obviously, because he's got a stall. So he goes around and hoovers it all up, and then he whacks yeah. it on his stall, and he's selling it at eBay prices. And, oh, it's just irritating. He's not doing anything wrong, just as... You know, as as the average Joe who goes there trying to find this stuff to resell, you just know he's been there before you. So yeah. he's quite frustrating. Yeah, and it, it's all, you know, okay, I don't mind people asking decent prices for it, but it's all sight unseen, not sight unseen, but like untested. You've got no comeback if it's not working or anything. Yeah. And you pay for those protections on eBay, don't you? So, Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I've, I've, I don't even look at his stall anymore because he knows his stuff. You know full well he's looking it up. 
so it's not even worth my time going through his stuff anymore. And like you say, if I do end up buying a console or something, I've got no comeback. So, yeah, yeah. there you go. I uh, still yeah, find the odd bit. It's one of the reasons I've stopped buying... Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I've never really bought Xboxes at the car boot because they're all broken. Every single Xbox 360 is oh, yeah. always, always overheated, no matter what the people tell you. Uh, PlayStation 3s as well have that blinking prob blinking light problem and yeah. Uh, yeah i'm the same with pst's i know you pick up a lot of pst's but i went through a run of just finding loads that just the lasers weren't reading and i had i had endless trouble with it in when we used to have the shop with them going yeah. wrong so I, to be honest unless it's dirt cheap i won't even consider it now it's not worth the hassle for me well i pick up PS2 is mainly because uh, the controllers have still got pretty decent trade-in value. Um, that's pretty much the only reason. So if you can get a bundle with, a couple, say, three uh, official controllers, I think CEX is about six quid trade-in uh, credit. So, you know, five, six quid. So you can soon add up if you've got a couple of them. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you use CEX a lot? Because I, I, I don't really... I a little bit in. Yeah, little bits. Uh, what I've been doing, what remember what Sean did a while back? He had sort of loads of mediocre DS stuff and just traded it all in, and then got some quicker selling stuff like some of the Pokemon games. I've done that before. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Traded a lot of stuff that's got a bit too scuffed for FBA or whatever. I don't want to risk my feedback. So some sort of CDs that will still play, but aesthetically they don't look great mario karts and stuff like that and then traded it in for a nicer copy of something that they've got that'll sell quick so yeah well, i think cex don't really care about how scratched it is do they because they have they just skim all their stuff anyway yeah they yeah. pretty much buy, they get a bit they get a bit tetchy where you know it's got the laser burn where it's all the way round. they get a bit funny uh -huh. with that but yeah so yeah, how's things with you anyway? What have you been up to? Um, I've been mainly messing about with Lego. <laughs> um, I had a, a fairly, well not masses, a couple of boxes full left over from when I used to do Lego all the time and finally got around to sorting it and it's just, if you've got the right stuff it's like printing cash with Lego and it's yeah. mad. I'm going to do another sales roundup soon. I've been selling the tiniest little bits that you'd think who the hell's going to pay for this. Like little uh, Lego knights plumes that go on the sh top of the helmet and little epaulets yeah. for knights. So it's like a couple of millimeters long. And a few of those in a bundle I've been selling for, you know, seven, eight pounds for less than a gram of Lego <laughs> so in, in some cases. And little tiny shields. So, yeah, I mean, I had a box full with, of about five kilos. And I reckon, I don't know, I'll turn it into a thousand pounds hopefully within a month. Wow. That's the plan, anyway. <laughs> That's crazy, that is. Yeah, if you know your stuff, and it's not hard to work out really, you just, just use completed listings and, and part numbers and you can just see what the stuff's going for. Um, I don't tend to go right down to individual bits anymore because I don't really have the time, but I used to. But now I do little bundles that are worth five pounds or more and then uh, they tend to sell quicker and it's worth your time if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've got a load of Lego I need to sort out, but I just I haven't got the patience for it at the moment. So I just need to get stuff out the door. Yes, I know what you mean. Mm. Uh, apart from that, I, I've slowed down with FBA. I haven't been finding as much stuff. I haven't had the money to invest in in RA stock. Um, I sent some. I, I got some drills, some um, Bosch drills off Amazon. And sent them back so I bought them at 20 and they I've sold two at 45 <laughs> it was one of those where they turn up I took the invoice out and then sent them back with my barcodes on I love it when it's that easy that, that's silly that is silly. so you you paid for the postage then because you didn't do it on a prime account is that the I yeah it was, they were bought on a different account yeah and I use super saver or whatever I don't even have a Prime account anymore. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, sent them back in on my main account. 
Yeah, the, I mean, that's one of the reasons I haven't really dabbled in it uh, because of, you know, I've got a Prime account, so I need to sort something else out to order them in. I did, I went to Tesco the other day and bought some of these, some Karcher stuff that they got. Uh, they just got a couple of like, attachments and some um, kids' toy things, tuk tuk animals or something. So, uh, but most of the stuff, it was there was either too many FBA sellers already. They'd obviously been like a countrywide discount, or um, just because it it was either too awkward. So it was like a kid's toy that the front was open, so then you'd have to polybag it, and you know then it starts getting complicated. Yeah, I, I picked up some um, in Toys R Us. The Toys R Us in Stevenage, they knocked the old one down and opened a new one. And they were obviously clearing old dead stock. And I picked up a load of bits in there. And there was these rabbits, these little thumper rabbits. And it was such a bind to, to bag them. They were an awkward shape and they were big. And yeah, it was like oh, half yeah. an hour's work just to bag up four or five of these stupid rabbits. <laughs> I, I remember you sharing the photo because they lo they looked all there, sort of imprisoned in their sort of plastic suffocations. Yeah, yeah, it looked like some animal torture ritual was going on. Yeah, some kind of not condone at all before I get hate mail. <laughs> some kind of plush lovers paradise, asphyxiation paradise. Yeah. Yeah, it's wrong in all the ways, Tom. <laughs> so yeah, I know what you mean. It's I mean people sell plush plush toys, a lot of like second hand plush toys and stuff on on Amazon and I just can't be bothered because you've got to poly bag it, then you've got to put the suffocation warning labels on and all that. It's it, it's it's not as quick as, you know, just slapping a barcode on a disc uh, or case and sending it in. Yeah, I've done some uh, plushes secondhand. I think I sent three or four up when I was just testing the water last year and seeing what sold and what didn't. And I yeah. think they've all gone. Um, uh, no, I think I've got one Nintendo plush left up there, a Cooper or something. Yeah. But I think the rank on it is like two million or something. <laughs> so it's never going to sell anyway. Yeah, yeah I had to have a lot of stuff returned to me that was in the millions recently, and that was a nightmare. Yeah, because they sent they they sent it in an individual packaging. So I had like over a hundred packages arriving at the house. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I had some some uh, like what do they call it? Dead inventory or or unfulfillable inventory, oh. and um, so I couldn't get it relisted. So I, I had I think it was three items, and I got them, and I assumed they'd put them in a box and send one box. But no, they sent three like those fold over cardboard envelope things. Yeah. So I assume they charged me the individual. I haven't gone in and looked how much it cost me, but it would have been cheaper for them and me to do it in one box. But oh no, <laughs> I, I didn't even look how much it costs because it's like a riddle to find out how much it actually costs to you. To really confusing. So you know, if yeah, I couldn't know, find the place to find. No, I've no idea because basically my long-term storage fees for because it's now every six months, I think. It was going to be, they were going to charge me 250 quid. So I was like, whoa, I need to get some stuff sent back to me here. Because although, I mean, even 250 quid is still fairly cheap for storage. But yeah, so I just got loads sent back. But by the end of it, my postman hated me because he was just coming up with an entire, like, like the back of his van full of parcels for me. And he's like, oh, you've been busy. It's like, no, no. The, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't make sense because surely their system is clever enough to just get a great big box and put 50 items in at a time as we send it to them yeah. and just send it back to you by UPS. I mean, what's the problem? I know. I know. Who so knows? What, what are you doing with all that? Is it old book stock and stuff? Are you going to stick yeah, it Yeah, it's, VHS. it's A lot of it is VHS tapes, which I'd sent in when I first started. Because I saw people getting amazing money, well, not amazing money, but like six to eight quid for a VHS tape. But then I, I wasn't paying attention to the rank, and it actually, they just weren't selling for that. You know, there was a bunch of merchant fulfilled asking silly money, and, you know, that it wasn't selling. So, no. yeah. And then there was some stuff like um, I sent some light bulbs in, some new in the packaging light bulbs. And um, they were just too niche, like, and I got some books sent back that were, again, too niche. They were like, um, 
bizarre books and the listings on them were dreadful uh, there was no picture just a picture of a generic like clip art book and then like, no description so in hindsight no one would ever buy them but i was blinded by the fact that numbers were really good and i didn't actually look into it more so i probably shouldn't have sent them in yeah yeah uh, i was just going to say we've got 20, 30 viewers it's just clicked up to i'm going to try <laughs> if this all crashes it's my fault i'm going to try and get in and see if anyone's talking to us um all right let's see what happens go into my channel see what i can find mm. oh, here we go resellers hang out but i can't there's no comments on the actual thing so where do i find the comments Ah, here we go. There's a here it says hi. Uh, how do I get in there? Here we go. hanging out. Oh, but I can't mute that. Yeah. Well, I can see some questions in the top corner, but I can't scroll the box. <laughs> David McGregor says, "Did anyone just see that giant spider behind Nick's head?" Above the blue <laughs> was huge. What here? I don't know if he's messing with me or what. I'm, luckily, I'm not actually scared of spiders, but if you see it again, uh, let me know. Um, and, you know, I can't scroll the questions. Can you see them, Tom? No. All I can see is it says there's 32 people watching, but um, I can my see feeling very well with it. The only other one I can read says, I've got a complete set of motorised teacup fighters at my local beach cell. Motorized teacup fighters. What the hell's that? <laughs> what? Am I missing something? Motorized teacups. No idea. No. Oh I can't there's some another question just come in. I can't scroll them. Oh I knew this wouldn't work. <laughs> well I've got I've got the vid oh no I've got them here. I've got them. Yeah. Can you scroll oh. through them? Because mine are just stuck. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I've got them. God, there's loads of questions. Uh, Zahir says, hi, guys. Uh, we've got Steve, uh, Stephen Green saying, hi, guys. Really enjoy your videos. My wife thinks I've got a problem. Um, yeah. It's all right. We've all got problems. Yeah. Uh, David McGregor said, I just heard Tom picked up FIFA internet guru alert yeah <laughs> uh, uh, um we've got oh we've got um we've got tex in there old texas gal treasures hey boys oh hi margaret how are you doing in texas got... nice sunny day i assume <laughs> we've got leanne i think it is there saying about golden eye uh uh yeah what have we got i don't know what motor if any can someone put in what is motorized teacup fighters that would be much appreciated <laughs> should i try um, googling it no no i wouldn't motorized we've got we've got a question from zahir what's your opinion on listing software like at t I can't even read it. Or garage sale. Is it Octiva? I don't know how you say that. So Octiva, yeah, that's the listing yeah. website, isn't it? What's your I haven't started of... using that. I was going to switch to it because my garage sale was really playing up. Because um, garage sale is a, a program that you you pay for. It's paid a paid software, and it's yeah. for Mac. Um, and I've been using that for a few years. Um, but every now and again, it goes really buggy and it winds me up. So I was going to switch to Octiva, but I haven't done yet. I probably still will at some point. But I feel almost obliged to use Garage Sale because I paid a fair amount of money for it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's like me with Scam Power. Uh, not Scam Power, Profit Bandit. Um, like the Amazon app itself is just as good, but I'm so used to Profit Bandit that I keep paying the six quid a month or whatever it is uh, yeah sometimes um, it's just what you get used to and it's really you know when you get as old and fuddy daddy as us change is a nightmare <laughs> yeah i'm getting the p 
piss taken out of me because I said the yogurt thing, not the actual thing. Yes, I did say Activia yogurt. No, no product <laughs> placements here. Um, we've got uh, Bob Billington in the house, um, and he says Go Vale, uh, which is his favourite football club. Um, we've got Carp Fishing Adventures. Hey guys, after years of reselling uh, now, do your family slash loved ones understand what you do and understand you make a good living from it? So, uh, um, for me, um, yeah. yeah, I've been doing this way too long. So my my family totally get what I do. Well, they t they know it's not you know a hidden secret, and I think the vast majority of them understand it. A lot of my family have dabbled in it anyway. My dad is a beekeeper and he used to sell like beekeeping stuff online and wax that he'd get from his bees. I helped him set that up. Um, my sister, my eldest sister has dabbled in eBay and, and has done really well with random stuff. She's picked up at jumble sales and stuff. So yeah, most of my family know. A lot of my friends, I don't talk about it too because it's just, complicated if, they, if they're not into it and they don't understand eBay you just get stupid questions so I don't tend to talk about it a lot with friends yeah I know I know that feeling I, I'm still at the stage where I get people singing like the any old iron tunes or they get the steptoe and sun music out and that sort of thing or you know this time next year Rodders will be millionaires I still I still get all that stuff you know um so I tend to just say to friends like I sell computer games or something like that because otherwise, yeah. So, and then I get this. So when when are you going to get a real job? So that's, that's yeah, that old chestnut. I mean that the the social side of what what we do, like this hangout and you know chatting on Messenger and and the Facebook groups and stuff. That's really helped me not feel such an isolated weirdo because. I have a group of weirdos to share, you know, <laughs> my Lego selling and other weird stuff with. So yeah, that's, if anything's come out of YouTube, it's, yeah, sharing all of this with you bunch of weirdos. Yes, <laughs> you guys out there watching two weirdos talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we've, um, yeah, we've got a couple of others here. Apparently, uh, is it Gav Loft? Uh, I bought some taxidermy bear eggs from a man in the pub and they turned out to be coconuts. Taxidermy what? Bear, bear eggs. And they, from a man <laughs> Hairy the eggs. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I've annoyed Bob because I got this team wrong. Um, but we've got no other questions uh, at the moment. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that that perception thing is a bit a bit difficult sometimes. What people you know think you you do, but it it doesn't bother me personally. Uh, uh, but yeah, it definitely helps having the Facebook group to sort of bounce ideas and just to check you're not sort of stuck in a rut. Like, am I actually doing this right, or am I getting myself wrapped up in circles? Yeah, yeah. It's just having a place you can go where there's like-minded people i think it's as simple as that for me having a group of friends that i can get ex you know i can share something with that i get excited about whereas if i phoned one of my mates and said i've just sold a bunch of lego knight shields for a tenner that cost me nothing they'd go what what are you talking about crazy fool <laughs> yeah. but i can drop a post like that on facebook and people will be like genuinely quite happy about it <laughs> Uh, we, we have got a question from uh, Leanne saying, uh, storage guys, where do you keep all your stock? Well, so, you go first. Well, for me, it's, it's mostly uh, Amazon, uh, a lot of it. Some of it's, some of it's here. Um, then I've got, well, Nick's seen my piles of shame. Um, I've got a, a garage full of... Uh, uh, another garage thing full, two sheds full, a workshop full, uh, a shipping, a storage container full. 
and uh, a 40 foot shipping container half full so uh, yeah i've got issues <laughs> yeah this is one reason i love chatting to tom it makes me feel more normal than i normally do because my my situation is a lot better a lot better than it was um because i've been buying less and and selling a fair bit so i've got some storage here what you see here is pretty much all just random ebay listed stuff a big shelf up there full of board games a huge shelf over there covered in stock uh, a shop full of children's clothes a few thousand items and then at home the old office where i used to do my videos from is just a mess full of crap and stock and then my loft at home yeah is is bad it's got lots of stuff in the loft that goes back years <laughs> yeah my, my plan was to clear all of that by the time boot sale season came around and we're kind of there already and i've i've probably done about half of it if that yeah definitely i mean someone's asking uh is all that stuff unlisted for me um a lot of it is stuff like of sort of my own collections and stuff like that um and uh, and about half of it is unlisted uh and then there's i've got a huge to sell at a car boot pile when the weather gets good i'm just gonna get some stuff out of the car boot and it's all stuff that's like it's all right but it's not worth mucking about with there is i haven't got enough of it to bundle together you know that sort of stuff um all the stuff all like all stuff here is listed and that sort of thing but um yeah i've got a lot of unlisted stock that came from a huge house clearance which i've still yet to tackle that i've got no money into it so yeah so that's that question um I've got someone here, uh, John, asking what advice, uh, well, there's a couple of people asking it, what advice would you give to someone when they are preparing to go full time? Uh, and then Stephen asks, hi guys, how long did it take for you to make reselling your full time income? So, yeah, I don't what know if you was the to... first one? What advice would I give someone going full time? Yeah, who's going full time full time I, I would say to to spend some time working out how much you need to earn and how much you think realistically you can earn. you know if you're talking about packing in a job actually I made a video about this a while back about what I suggested people did before taking that leap and I'll, I'll put a link below when this is up on my channel um, but I would say be be really honest with yourself about the numbers and perhaps give yourself a, a trial month you know and sell as much stuff as you can in your spare time and keep a log of how many hours you put in and then work out what your hourly rate was over that month and then you can extrapolate from that with some sort of accuracy what you can actually earn full time because what i can do what tom can do what someone else can do may not relate to you at all you know it's all very well for us to say yeah we earn a living but it it may be different for other people so be honest with yourself and challenge yourself to see what you can do for a certain period and then apply that extrapolate the numbers to full time and see if it makes sense yeah no that's good advice i mean i was going to say something very similar that if you're in a job and say even if you can take a week off a week or two weeks uh, if you've got those holidays uh, get it booked in and then just going to go okay i'm going to try this full time because you might not like it you might find it's because it, 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 some people like the discipline of, of having a set routine and when you're setting your own routine it's far too easy just to go well i'm going to stay in bed today uh so before you jump in just try it just try it out for a week or two weeks and just see what you can get done in, in that time really yeah i would say the grass is always green on the other side it sounds yeah. lovely it sounds idyllic working for yourself not having the boss all the things that genuinely are the reasons we kind of do this but they're also it's a double-edged sword because yeah self-motivation and and resisting all the temptations to do other stuff when you should be working it's, it's tough and it really doesn't suit everybody so yeah you're right if you can book a load of time off you know in a lump and just work your ass off reselling then you can have some accurate numbers yeah definitely because and also don't faff about trying to sell you know single like uh, pokemon cards and stuff like that 
try and focus on the quicker selling high value items or, or not high value but like stuff that's popular stuff that's going to sell quick don't don't go in and go immediately long tail or fiddle about with little stuff you you want to go in there and and because once you start selling stuff it'll give you that confidence boost to carry on so i've seen a lot of people start up they immediately take the of advice of us and go in the list and forget it thing and then think well why isn't it sold in a week i don't understand so yeah that's also one of the I mean, advice it is i was just thinking through what you were saying it is hard to perhaps gauge what you potentially can earn even in a month because even the stuff i sell and i tend to do the more quicker turnover if you compare me to ken for example my business model is much more quicker turnover but even i have stuff that stays on for months and certain things that will that have been on for a year and yet they will still sell you know everything sells eventually so yeah. depending on what your business model is it could be really hard to judge i mean if you haven't watched ken's videos do that because he his business model is much more he buys up obscure stuff and stuff that he's looking for that one person in the world who wants a victorian coat hanger you know with bells on it or whatever it is and he's happy to leave stuff on for a year or two years i watched his sales roundup last night his last one and there was stuff on there that had been listed two years ago you know or whatever mm. and he's happy to leave it there until it sells but if that's the sort of business model you're getting into who knows what you can earn because it's all about building up a massive inventory and that could take you as long as it's taken ken like a couple of yeah. years you know of listing so i it's a tough one yeah definitely because it's bit about uh, blah, blah, blah business model makes sense because you know you're paying what five five p for a 30-day listing or whatever it is on the shop thing with free listings as well so you know what's that 60p a year to to list it um so one pound 20 for two years i mean that's not bad really uh, i just sold a copy of uh, battleships uh, a vintage battleships game i think i only got like seven quid for it and that was listed for over two years um yeah. so yes yeah, it's, it's, some things certainly aren't quick um yeah uh we've got a question for you actually nick um and i've lost it um you lost it years ago mate yeah i'm still on the taxidermy eggs um uh, <laughs> uh, uh yeah <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, it's from uh, David McGregor saying uh, one one for Nick. Andrea obviously wants to be involved in YouTube now. How does your daughter feel? Is she proud or mortified? Um, Ellen is at that teenage where well, she'll be 15 this year and I don't get a whole lot out of her. <laughs> it's it's at the grunting and staring at the floor stage. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. She knows that I do YouTube and, and I really enjoy it and I make a lot of videos and I don't know what she thinks of it all. She was really excited in the early days when it was all starting and I was getting subscribers and she was really into it. But yeah, she's doing that teenage thing where she's, if it's not Fallout Boy or Panic at the Disco or some other emo band, she doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> um okay we've got some others we've got someone asking here how many charity shops do you have locally uh um not that long ago every other chat every other shop seemed to be a charity shop which got up everybody's nose uh i've got 33 charity shops local to, within my local vicinity wow and my, my uh my marathon challenge next week to see if i can visit them all in one day well for me there's only about five within you know a fairly yeah, probably driving distance that sort of thing you have to go further afield are kind of dotted around in the countryside but i know you've got quite a few in hitching haven't you nick yeah um one two three four five six seven i think there's eight in hitchin and there's a new one opening up just down the road from where i am now in the shop um uh, so hitchin <laughs> hang on <laughs> it's andrea hold on bear with Hello. <laughs> no, we're, I'm chatting right now. You're you're now live on air. <laughs> yeah, we we won't be too long. Uh, perhaps another ten minutes, and then I'll I'll come home. Okay. See you soon. Bye. 
<laughs> Andrea wondering where I am. Um, but yeah, to point my local because um, Letchworth is only 10 minutes up the road and there's another like eight or 10 there. And then you've got Stevenage where there's there's a couple of decent ones. And Wellin, as you know, Tom, is pretty good. And that's yeah. only 15, 20 minutes away. So if I do want to spend a whole day doing it, and it does take a long time to go around charity shops, it's not a quick thing. If I do yeah. spend the whole day, I could probably get to 30 in a day. Um, yeah, uh, we've got a couple of things. Uh, we've got a shout out for Pauline Scott. Um, just asking for a shout out. Um, Hi, Pauline. Uh, Silverhair Stacker asks, how old, how old is too old to be a reseller? Uh, I, I say he's never too old to get into it. Um, no, anyone can do this. If, if you can walk around, yeah, you can be a reseller. It's just getting hold of the stock, really. Yeah, I see some real old boys at the car boot sales digging in the things of tools, definitely. Um, you know, um, what have we got? Oh, someone asked if I still collect coins and stuff. Uh, I see the collection. I mainly collect computer game stuff these days. I sold off a lot of the coins when the the price was silly because it was all too tempting. So I still have got some odds and sods knocking about still, but uh, mostly, um, yeah, there's computer game stuff. Um, you collect postcards, don't you, Nick? Do you still dabble much in that? Or? Not anymore. No, I, I collect cigarette cards. Um, yeah, postcards I use. Yeah, I had um, a massive postcard collection, but I, I sold that off because I, I'd lost interest in it, really. Um, but yeah, cigarette cards I have tens of thousands of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've got someone here. <laughs> I think I probably mess it. Uh, Tom, I'm earning between 15 and 30 pounds selling crap on eBay, just thinking of jacking my job in. Is it worth it? Well, Dude, I think that, me and Zahir had that same comment. Is that a day or is that a week or a month? You know, um, got someone saying that Amazon FBA is the the solution to storage problems. And I do agree; it, it is good for clearing stock, but then it's a dub, it's a knife that cuts both both ways because then your eyes are open to other stuff, so then you end up buying more stock, especially RA and things like that. Yeah, somebody was asking me on my channel the other week about would I recommend as a reseller starting out on Amazon and somebody was just going to clear a few bits and bobs they had and maybe some games and this and that. And I was trying to steer them away from FBA because if you're not going to do it on a certain scale, I don't think it's economical because you've got to pay that monthly subscription and then you've got to kind of keep feeding the beast really because let's say you sell half of this initial lot you send up you've only got 20 things left up there unless you're going to keep sending you've got to keep paying them the fee i mean what's the monthly fee 20 30 in it something like yeah. that yeah something like that yeah but i think it, you have to do fbi on a certain scale to make it make sense in my head anyway and once you're yeah. up, once you've got stuff up there they've kind of got you you've got to keep going yeah yeah i mean it's very much like someone on crystal meth you know once once it's got a hold of you. It's it's difficult and expensive to quit. Um, <laughs> it really is because you know it's it's a lot of money. If I was to want all my stuff sent back, it'd be a nightmare. I'd have to like I'd kill. I'd end up killing the postman. Uh, you know, for for well, four thousand eight hundred odd packages arriving at my house. If if you know, it just wouldn't be feasible. So. You have to think that Amazon's in the selling business, not in the storing business. So when I first started, I thought, great, and get rid of this crap out of my house. But now I'm really trying to be more selective. Yeah. But it is, yeah, one, once you get in there and you get in with them and you start your FBA thing, you quickly realize you've, you've got to give it a certain amount of attention and keep throwing stuff up there. Um, that's what I'm finding anyway. And the more I've got up there, the more I want to send more up there because stuff starts selling more and yeah, it's like a vicious circle. Mm. Yeah. Um, we've got someone asking, uh, Bernard Armstrong has just started listing clothes on um, on eBay. 
uh, asking what is a good camera to use for listing on eBay I mean I use just my iPhone camera uh, is what I use and then I've got a fairly basic just point and shoot Kodak 8 8.5 megapixel camera that I just take photos with um, and that's all I do yeah I'm using my iPhone now but I'm I personally don't list much clothing Andrea does and she uses her iPhone <laughs> I think with clothing, it's all about the light, not so much about how good the camera is. It's yeah. about if you can using natural light because otherwise you can mess up the colors. And the last thing you want to do is sell a, a dress and then they get it and it's a different shade. Um, so yeah, I think light is the key, natural light with clothing. Uh, I've got a question um, from uh, Bobby Billington asking, question for Tom, can I say no yet to a deal? Um, and um I, I no, I can't unfortunately. I the FIFA and high school musical story <laughs> yeah. proves that point. Well I went out sourcing with Bob and uh, he calls me the boy who can't say no. Um so uh yeah, that was uh yeah, an interesting one because you know it it's sometimes you just you just can't say no. Um but yeah, I do need to try and be more picky and be like okay no and the fifa is a great example i should have just walked away from that one but i was junk drunk and got blinded you know i should look more carefully yeah i have a little voice that i that i hear in my head saying don't do it don't do it nick and you'd have been proud of me i was in a charity shop only yesterday and they had an old a big box old down for the one that goes really for really good money on amazon and ebay but it was all bashed in and it was in a mess and i resisted it and i resisted an absolute boulder dash as well because the box was a bit knackered yeah. and they were they were at that price where it was just too much for me to the, the downfall i would have bought for spares but at four pound fifty i i was just i heard the little voice say just leave it nick you've got enough crap <laughs> yeah i i personally stopped buying a lot of board games unless unless the contents are like obviously sealed or that sort of thing or if they're like 50p because i just i've just got no time to check them and then they get put on the side and then i don't check them so yeah. yeah, if they're like four pound fifty, I'll just walk away. Unless it's like Harry Potter or you know Hero Quest or something. Exactly. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I was chatting with Zahir about Lego, and because Zahir's like, you know, Lego back off. Although he's actually bought some <laughs> recently. Um, <laughs> and it's all about if if you enjoy. We've said this before. If you enjoy a certain product or you have a passion for it, it's that much easier to sell. I can mess about with Lego for hours and it's not a chore I genuinely enjoy it likewise with board games I have something wrong with my brain that I that I enjoy checking parts and you know checking how complete they are and stuff so it's it's horses for courses it's like you with yeah. coins and jewelry I'm just yeah. I just don't even look at it I honestly don't I must have walked past so much decent gold jewelry <laughs> so I have no idea you know and it doesn't interest me enough to yeah. properly educate my stuff myself about it no, I've been telling myself for years I need to learn what to look for and just never have. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real sort of uh, time sink, that sort of thing. And you've got to have that passion. Uh, I mean, for me, I got into the passion of that because at the time, the prices were mental. There was loads of gear out there. You could see loads of stuff. And it was like printing money. It was ridiculous. Uh, but now people are cottoned on. People know, you know, people, mostly people have scrapped it all. You know, they've got when the price was high, they've got rid of it all. Mm. Uh, so I never see that sort of stuff at car boot sales, hardly at all. But the knowledge is still there. So if I do come across something, you know, it's it's just like second nature. But I very rarely buy that stuff anymore, just because I don't see it at all. It's weird. Yeah. It the the thing is, I mean, you're right. But there's the odd occasion. A couple recently, Ken picked up at auction. You must have seen this. He picked up that solid silver tankard. Yeah. In, in with yeah. A, a lot. But the auctioneers, in an auction house selling antiques, they missed a solid silver tankard and put it in with a load of plate. Yeah, you'd be surprised. But that's the thing with auctions. You've got to go every week to sniff it like Ken does. You know, you've got to... You've got to be yeah. there, dedicated, and nine times out of ten you won't find anything, but then other times you will. I mean, it, it's happened to me. I mean, I found, like, um, 
what was it like a 450 pound gold coin in with the job lot of just silver coins unlisted wasn't even in the thing and it was at the bottom of a tube like stashed underneath something else and wow. nobody else realized it and uh, crazy yeah and then there's other times where there's I've, there's been a lot where there's been some half sovereigns in there they weren't listed on the auction catalog i know the person who won them and when he went to collect it only one of them out of the three weren't was in there, but he couldn't kick off because they weren't listed. So oh. you can get burned. Yeah. There's somebody them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. But I mean Ken's great. I mean, some of the stuff he does with the cat badges and stuff just blows my mind. You know, it's it's yeah. mental. Another yeah. one, um, Margaret, who who was watching earlier, might still be watching, picked up in a like a thrift store over there in America a little I can't remember what it was now, but it was gold, and she sold yeah. that for three or four hundred dollars, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think she paid like a quarter for it or something insane like that. Yeah. And it just shows the stuff is out there, and a lot of these thrift stores and charity shops don't have the education like I don't, and and don't don't spot the stuff. But yeah, yeah. but I, I think it's just one of those things, like you say, horses for courses. It's what you're interested in, but don't niche down too much. Like if I. Like when I first started and went just down that jewelry and coins thing, I go to, I mean, this sounds mental now. I'd go to a car boot sale and I wouldn't buy anything. I'd, I'd walk away, come home, and, yeah, oh, did you get anything? Oh, no, not today. I didn't see anything. And now that just seems like like mental. Like now, oh, did you get a car full or two car fulls? You know. Yeah. You've gone the, the other extreme now, Tom. You, you can't leave stuff behind. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, uh, once once your mind's opened, it, I think FBA does that definitely. 